Hello all, Father Albanus Ogawihe has decided to go home finally to minister unto his people way back home. And I have come here today to um, give an impromptu interview. He wasn't aware that I would be interviewing him. So listen and know a little bit more about this man who has helped us a lot in developing the choir in the Catholic Church. And also he ministered to the French Catholics in Quebec. This narrative will not be complete without letting you watch a clip of the choir which he worked on. Happy Green folks. Church are you, what's the main church you are attached to? This is St. Alphonsus? Yeah, this is St. Aloysius, Aloysius. Gonzaga. Mm -hmm. And um, I, have other, I have three other churches. You know? So, um, and those churches are all independent, so to speak, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not like there are stations under this parish. They are okay. autonomous in Quebec, yeah, that's the way they are. Mm -hmm. So I have other churches. I have Our Lady of Victory in Buckingham. Mm -hmm. I have also St. Columban in Gatno here. I also have uh, another church, um, uh, St. Malachi in Mayo. Mayo is a different uh, municipality. Yeah. We have uh, not about 40, 40 kilometers, 45 kilometers from here. So, How do you cope with all these things? There are up to four churches. Yeah, is you, you mean you visit the four churches on a Sunday? Yeah, every weekend I have masses in all the four churches, like uh, two of them on, on Saturday evening mm -hmm. and the other two on Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I go there 
I go there once from time to time, depending on what events they have, yeah. funeral, you know, wedding, uh, weekday masses for those of them who were good for weekday masses. Yeah. So, and a uh, lot of meetings, you know, because every, every one of them is different and uh, you have to be part mm -hmm. of it. So, it has not been easy, um, yeah, but uh, by God's grace, I have been able to carry them along for seven yeah. years now. So. Seven good years. Uh, yeah. For now, this you still have time to celebrate mass for the Igbo Church. Yeah, well, that's that's quite a, a task. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, the Igbo say agonan, agonan. So, oh, oh, so no matter what happens, <laughs> um, our people are our people are still our people. You know. Yeah. So we find, and good good thing we only have that once in a month and um, yeah. I remember you joined us when the Igbo Church used to be at uh, a Lady of Mount Carmel. Yeah, yeah. Then we transitioned to St. Peter's Head Renton. Yeah, yeah. And then you've been playing a big role with the choir. Yeah, I tried. Uh, you know, music is, uh, is my life. Uh, you know, my, uh, I don't know. All my life I have been in music, um, singing, singing, and uh, playing, you know. So it has been part of my life, and uh, I felt that um, it is something I can offer to the community here. And uh, I tried as much as I can to do that. Yeah. I wish we could do more, but unfortunately, the, the virus wouldn't let us. Yeah, yeah. so that's it. Yeah. And I also know you were preparing for the tenth anniversary. anniversary. Yeah, so <clears throat> you have contacted me about writing the history yeah. of the Ibo Church, which we all started. Mm. But then the COVID came, everything came to stand still. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The COVID was just um, an obstacle to many things we, we felt we could realize, you know. Mm. And uh, it's almost uh, a year, getting to two years it's now. It's to two years. And we are not even sure whether we are still out of the woods yet. Yes, we yes. are so. not yet. <laughs> Before virus, we were saying life is hard, lonely, mm. busy. Now it's worse. Yeah, people actually, are locked in their homes. Yeah, mm. it, it's even better now because at least uh, many of us have uh, kind of uh, had a kind of uh, understanding about the virus. Mm. Uh, last year during the lockdown, a lot of people almost got crazy. You know, because they're still crazy now. Yeah, because it was so hard. It was hard for me too because uh, in in Canada here, where it, the priest is always alone. Mm -hmm. Then added with um, the lockdown thanks to COVID, mm -hmm. so it became even worse. worse. And mm -hmm. um, so I, I wouldn't like to get used to it anyway. So, but uh, <laughs> would I say I would have got used to it? But. It took me thirty minutes almost driving distance to this place, mm -hmm. and the scenery is gorgeous. The river—is it a lake or is it? Yeah, a it's um, uh, Ottawa River. Uh, was um, that the Ottawa uh, River? Ottawa River, and um, yeah, and um, and Gatineau River too. Gatineau both of them. River. So I think both, both of them have a kind of connection. Yeah, and, uh, so oh, and uh, so many boats. Do you own a boat in the river? No, I don't know. I don't have anyone. <laughs> so you know, this time around now the weather is getting better. So mm. the people are coming out. So you mm. know, when you pass that church, that rocky church, yeah, you know, there are a lot of uh, people there now. You know, yeah. They, Many of them driving mm -hmm. or riding their boat and um, doing other stuff. Cycling, Cycling and, uh, <coughs> and the younger running, ones are walk, skating. Yeah, skating and uh, yeah. biking. Yeah. Biking. It's always busy this time around, especially around that uh, mm -hmm. church and um, the river. Area, so. it's, uh, this looks like the end of the world. This looks like a village setting, countryside <laughs> setting up. And uh, normally, you are alone mm. now with this part of the world. Mm. I don't know if you see many Africans here. Are there many, or you are the only lone African here? Oh, well, um, there are a lot of Africans, I, I mean, ac across here. I mean, in Gatineau, mm -hmm. a lot of them, a lot of uh, Africans, but those Africans are mainly from uh, the Francophone Africans, you know, yeah. like uh, people from Burkina Faso. Um, Senegal, Guinea, Mali, uh, not even especially uh, Congo. Oh, Congo. Yeah, I see, you know, a lot mm. of them here. 
Um, <coughs> I think uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Cameroon, good number of Cameroon too. Yeah. And you know, the Mali w and the When you mention Congo, my mind goes down to when we were small. The war in Congo has lasted all right from childhood up to today. They're yeah. still fighting. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you can understand, you know, uh, the war in Congo is not just there. You know, Congo is the richest country it's the richest in, terms minerals. Of, in terms of uh, natural resources in the uh -huh. world. So you can, uh, you can always expect that. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the external bodies, you know, the... the I know. You know the, <laughs> It looks like the more resources you have, the more trouble on your yeah, head. Yeah, because uh, every part of the world, uh, you know, the world powers will be, you know, each to, be, uh, to have their own share. Yeah, exactly. And uh, the only way they make you to, the only way they can get that is by making you to fight each other. Then exactly. They will come and they intervene. And, uh, <laughs> and along the line, they, <laughs> they will intervene yeah, and they yeah, they their own terms. Yeah, so, so that's the mm. point. So it's, it's very, uh, Africans should really realize mm. that, you know, unfortunately, we, many of us are so blinded mm. uh, that we don't see it. Um, but it's, uh, oh, they see and they pretend not to see. They, um, one speaker said that they, normal African is after his belly. There was a man who spoke a lot in the internet. Mm. He wanted to correct things. Mm. So he went to contest the election. He struggled for a year trying to sell his portfolio, everything, but his opponent campaigned for only one week with bags of money. He lost, the opponent won. <laughs> so he said Africans are after their belly. Yeah, it's, it's very unfortunate, yeah. Yeah. yeah but, and, you know, um, <clears throat> African issues uh, are huge and... Um, they are complicated. They are complicated because uh, <laughs> something that has been there for a lot of centuries, you know, mm. centuries of uh, what I call it uh, um, confusion, you know, created, mm. created. So uh, we we have to work very hard and um, I pray hard uh, too pray because, hard because uh, um, we are, the forces we are fighting are <laughs> not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> Uh, can you tell us what you've been doing before you came to Canada? You about your activities in the schools yeah, okay. and so on. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, when I was ordained a priest in 1998, I was posted to a school and um, I was there as the vice principal of the school for four years. Mm -hmm. Then after the fourth year, the my bishop then, Bishop Ocha, of blessed memory. He just oh, died. he's dead. So, yeah. Oh. So now he asked me to go and start a new school in Amery. So I went and started the school from the scratch. At all? Yeah, Amery. 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 Um, yeah, so okay. uh, the name of the school is St. Gregory College. Mm. So I started it and uh, from the scratch and uh, eventually by 2008 when the first, uh, I mean the pioneers graduated, mm. then um, um, after their graduation, so I came here. Oh. So, 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 I was there like six years as a principal. Four oh. years was six years, then ten years. Ten years. Oh. Yeah, so, that's, oh, that's quite some experience. And uh, what really interests you so much in music? I I heard you listening to classical music. Yeah. Um, lots of them I love so much. Mm -hmm. So, how did you step into the music world? Well, um, it's just a, a natural inclination, um, and uh, what I say, family too, family. My father was a musician, my father used oh. to play, oh. um, he sings very well, he was actually, he was a choir master, so uh -huh. um, my uncle, that I took over from him, is a choir ma was also a choir master, oh. so and uh, in my, my family we used to, sometimes we sing and it looks like we are a choir, kind of, all of us, because <laughs> we are a large family, you know, mm -hmm. so all of us will be singing here and there, and uh, not just singing, we also dance a lot, mm -hmm. we have uh, the cultural dance, everything, so it's a kind of holistic music in that way, mm -hmm. um, but then when I went to the seminary, I, we, I kind of developed the, I mean, the music talent by engaging myself in choir, you know, mm -hmm. so I was a member of the choir, and uh, 
Actually, in the, in the senior seminary, I wrote a lot of uh, music for, oh. for the choir. I mean, senior like, seminary, is it the one in Enugu? Is it no, big uh, in City of Wisdom. So, uh, if City of Wisdom, where is sorry, it? Sorry, I am ah. uh, If you still go there today, you know, that time we used to have a uh, stencil. Stencil. So, yes. not many people can, could write in the stencil. Mm -hmm. So, but I did a lot for the choir, mm -hmm. writing those things. And then by, by doing that, I, I kind of learned, you know, some of the punctuations, what they mean, mm -hmm. you know, so, and uh, as time goes on, as time went on, I, I was able to also compose my own music, oh. you know, and uh, some of the music I compose are being sung in Nigeria and in Igbo, oh. you know, in the churches, you know, so, um, um, so I have a kind of the soft annotation is my fingertips, <laughs> uh, so, but I also, I can also interpret the stuff, but uh, not as, as uh, efficient as, uh, could do with uh, soft annotation. Mm. So that's how it started. And uh, um, as a seminary, I, I worked in many places. Uh, I taught many choirs, you know. Mm -hmm. I was a choir master. Actually, before I, I was then the deacon, I was a choir master, the, the general choir master oh. of the seminary where I was. Oh. Yeah, before I was ordained. So then after my ordination, every place every place I was, even in the school, mm. uh, tried to raise a choir. <clears throat> even before I left uh, for Amere, where I was, I produced a CD with yeah. my with my youth choir. Mm -hmm. Some of them were my students, so we produced Ooh. a very a very good CD. Uh, so, I mean, now that I'm thinking of going home, that 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 is also where I'm looking forward to, you know, mm -hmm. to see how we can. Um, I miss um, choir actually. You know, it's, it's part of the things that is that are moving me, asking me to go home. You know, mm -hmm. so that I get involved in what uh, my heart uh, desires so much. Yeah. During our younger days, mm -hmm. masses were said in Latin. Yeah, I know. And did you grow up into Latin high masses and so on? No, actually, I was, I was only, you know, I was born after the Second Vatican Council, so, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, be it as, as it may, uh, in the century we stay Especially in Nigeria, we still use Latin, you know. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of Latin songs. Uh, uh, up to today, I still go to Latin Mass at uh, downtown. No, no, downtown. That's uh, It used to be St. Anne. Mm -hmm. I used to go there. And then the priest will back the congregation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it looks like the priest is leading us on to God. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think uh, for me, mm -hmm. even though I wasn't born then, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, with the knowledge, I have now. Uh, I think that that is a that is the best way to worship. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish um, we could go back to that. Oh yeah, I cherish that a lot. In fact, uh, whenever I hear any Latin hymns, I drop whatever I'm doing and listen. Okay. And I still watch the Easter service uh, narrated by the late Archbishop Fulton Sheen. Okay. Did you hear about him? Yeah, I know. Uh -huh. Sheen, yeah. That, he, that was in 1947. He ran the commentary. He's still there till wow. today. But it, the video was in black and white. Oh, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. So, what special experience will you relate to Canada? You yeah, stay in Canada, the cold, yeah. the food, you cook your food, you must have graduated to cook yeah, nice soup. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, the, the first time I came here, it wasn't easy because uh, um, I would say that we are spoiled. We are spoiled in Nigeria, you know, uh, where we always had cooks. and uh, so. But when I, came, I arrived here, then I was faced with the reality of having to take care of myself, you know, to cook my food. I I heard it before I came anywhere, but uh, mm -hmm. even though I wasn't prepared for it, so but uh, <laughs> I had to learn by by force to do it. Trial and error. Yeah, I tried it, and uh, the first time I had to call my sister to tell me what, what <laughs> to do over the phone and when to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so gradually, gradually, I graduated, and with time, with time, I kind of uh, developed a kind of my own menu, you know, mm -hmm. and my own conventional way of uh, you know doing things, and uh, it had been. So wonderful for us. I wish I had tested the yeah, first soup. <laughs> I remember when I finished my high school, uh, I w went to teach uh, in a uh, Kibwe girls' school. Mm -hmm. I didn't cook well that time. 
I know my parents used to use uh, fresh fish to cook. Mm. So I went to market, bought uh, fresh fish to make soup. I didn't fry the free fish, uh, fish. I didn't do certain things. Believe me, I couldn't eat it. I had to throw it away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tried a couple of times before I came up to the level I have mm -hmm. now. Yeah, I know. Okay. And, uh, you know, talk, talking about Canada, you know, when I came here, I was in BC, and it was in the North BC, because when I, sometimes people from here, this mm -hmm. part of Canada, they think that BC is, uh, you know, winter free. It's not true. Oh, uh, that's the impression. It, I no, have. it's only the, when you talk about BC, when you talk about Kamloops and uh, the Van, Vancouver, there, yeah, yeah, down there, mm -hmm. the, those people, they don't have snow. I was in a place called Prince George, mm -hmm. so it was, uh, I mean, the winter there is almost like here. Wow. Yeah, so it was uh, it was really a kind of uh, a change, you know. <laughs> so uh, the first time I saw the snow coming down, I was, it was so enigmatic mm. uh, that I was even afraid to touch it. <laughs> so, but as time goes on, I uh, went on, I kind of uh, developed a kind of like liking for mm -hmm. for snow. Um, I I can't wait to see snow coming. <laughs> I get excited when it is, you know when we are expecting the snow to come back now. So mm -hmm. I like it so much. When I was in BC, when I was a little younger, I did a cross-country ski, you know. Oh. Yeah, I did it with my parishioners, you know. Is that? We had a club there, and then I joined them. Some of my, a lot of my parishioners were members. So, mm -hmm. so they helped me, I was, uh, I did a lot of skiing, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, you know Sometimes the legs there will get frozen <laughs> and uh, we make a, a, a kind of rank, rank um, on it. And, uh, mm -hmm. so so what is this one they use two sticks? Yeah, that, that's skin. 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 Yeah, skin. Yeah. And then you go down the slope. Yes, yeah, no, then you go, go up too. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I, I did that. You are more than I am. Yeah, I, I did that when I came in the first few years. Um, I did that and uh, eventually I didn't buy the skin. Myself, mm -hmm. somebody gave me the kind of the, they lent me their ski okay. shoes. Then uh, um, a few years before I left BC, they took over, they took back their oh. their ski, their ski mm -hmm. shoes. So then I, well, I, by then I was getting older, so I didn't want to break my. You get old. <laughs> what will I say of myself? I don't, I don't want to break my legs. So mm -hmm. since I moved here, no, I haven't done that. But I still develop. I still have that. Um, Liking and that love for snow mm. uh, because snow is so brilliant. You know, what I mean, like it's so white. Like, they, I just they used I just, to say as, just, as white as snow. Yeah, I love snow. You know, I mean, like mm. when is it September, October? I'll be anticipating it. And my parishioners, they know that I like it. So sometimes, oh. I, sometimes I, I make joke. You know, when I say, "Oh, I can't wait to see snow," they say, "Oh, this boy has come again." You know, because they know that I like it. Yeah? <laughs> so I'm going. I'm going to miss snow. Uh, how about the attendance in the church? Yeah, it's a fairly modern, um, medium-sized church. Do you have full? Is it filled up? Uh, well, um, pre-COVID, um, it wasn't full. Mm -hmm. Then you can now understand. Yeah, so what happens now? So um, uh, there is a problem here in Quebec. Um, a lot of people, everybody believes that they are Catholics, mm -hmm. but then when it comes to coming to church is a different mm -hmm. matter together. They don't come. They don't come. Especially the younger generation and uh, the church is here are always filled with uh, relatively old people. Mm -hmm. I know it's almost the same thing all over Canada but in Quebec precisely. Mm -hmm. um, because of uh, kind of the society has been so moving towards secularization yeah. um, more than every other province. Uh, this place used to be the stronghold of Catholicity. Unfortunately, things have changed uh, mm -hmm. over the years. And um, one of my churches say uh, we hardly get up to 20 people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. before so, COVID. Yeah, before COVID. So mm -hmm. when you get that, oh, thank God. Do you find any difference with preaching in Nigeria, preaching here. For example, mm -hmm. in Nigeria, let's say a parent comes, reports his son or child, do you call the son and thump your hand on him? You mustn't do this. Here, you may hear Lala. Hey, Lala. Yeah, you know that. Oh, you joke. So, and, uh, yeah. Lala, and again, you know, like, um, you know, I mean, 
it is not easy here with all the social issues and stands you know mm -hmm. we have here in the society sometimes it's very hard to preach uh, i'm not saying that you can't preach but uh, you know when you have uh, certain things regarded as uh, red crime mm -hmm. or hate speech mm -hmm. so that um, that you know, ties, ties you, ties you down so so there's a friend of mine he from uh, Imo State. Mm. Uh, we'll mention his name now. Mm. He used to be a priest at uh, Baseline, one mm. of the churches in Baseline. Mm. You know, every year the bishop will circulate a letter about abortion, mm. how bad it is. My friend finished reading the letter and then added his own. Mm. Said, This is very bad, this is evil, mm. you mustn't do it. Mm. The women group now reported him to the bishop. Mm. The bishop wrote the letter. Mm. And then the bishop called him and said, That's okay, you can say mass. When he reaches preaching time, don't preach another priest. <laughs> then I called the priest and said, When the flavor of salt has been removed from it, what use is it again? Yeah. If you cannot preach, what's the point? Yeah. Eventually moved to the States. I don't think things uh, were better off there. Yeah. And that's the difference I was referring to. Exactly. At yeah. home, you priest could in the church say, this must not happen, yeah. this is bad, this is evil. Yeah. You better be careful. That's the life we're living here. Yeah, yeah. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a very different place altogether. You know? mm -hmm. and, um, so from last Sunday, I heard you are going home. And uh, we will be missing you, as you saw after Mass yesterday. Touch people's hearts, and they, they were saying, Wow, be careful because of the problem at home, yeah. the killings, extrajudicial killings, and so on. We are really sorry that you are leaving, but it's something that has to be done. And I know God will guide you. It's God who gave you the idea to go, and He will not leave you unprotected. Yeah, I mean. And again, I always tell people, <clears throat> nobody lives forever. I fought the Civil War, and when, before I went, don't laugh now, mm -hmm. I had to go to Monsignor Obona, he's mm -hmm. late now. Mm -hmm. I said, Father, but the Bible said you shouldn't kill. Why are we going? He said, you are not going there to fight. You are at home. They killed you where they were, and you came back home. Then they came also to kill you. What do you do? You have to protect yourself. Uh -huh. So that encouraged me with prayer and so on. I thank God I came out without any injuries. We thank God immensely. And as you are living now, you keep us in mind. We have live stream masses every Sunday. Uh -huh. If you want, I can send you the link. Okay. Uh -huh. That will refresh your memory about Canada. So oh, on. Okay. And that's said by, that's from Father Maker's uh -huh. church. Uh -huh. And is there anything else I'm missing here now? Yeah, well, um, Something will let us know. When I say us, that's uh -huh. a. Church, yeah, I'm. I'm going home. Uh, you know, you know. If you have come to a, a country for 13 years, um, and you are going, you're going home. I, I don't. I don't think it's anything bad. You know. No. Uh, um, yeah, I was a den for the Diocese of Olo, and I worked there for 10 years. Then I came here and I worked for 13 years, more than what I'm. More I than at home. Yeah. So. Um, um, so I just want to go. My, luckily, I'm a, I'm a Canadian citizen too, so mm -hmm. I can always come here anytime mm -hmm. for holiday, you know. So, but um, I, I, f I feel the urge, the inner urge to go home and um, help, help people out, at help home help out, yeah, in, with the experiences yeah. you have got. Yeah, there. exactly. Yeah, so do that. Uh, um, unfortunately, mm -hmm. things are not uh, going well now, and it's even getting worse. Mm -hmm. But um, we still that is still our home, you know. My mother is still there, my siblings, uh, everybody is still there. Yeah, how many siblings do you uh, have? Eight of them. So eight? Yeah, so they are still there. Your yeah. parents were real Catholics. Yeah, my father, yeah, my father, 
passed away four years ago. So oh, yeah, yeah, I remember when yeah, you went exactly, to exactly. Yeah, so so it's four years now. Yeah, right? yeah, just yeah. So uh, oh. four years and um, I mean, like uh, I have a mixed feeling, you know, going to miss the people here, friends, yeah, the friends, yeah. Uh, I've already been missing people at home, so I'm mm. also go there and maybe. And um, with technology now, we live in a kind of virtual world, oh, yeah. so it's, easy, it's always easy to contact each oh, other yeah. again. And like I said, I'm, I have a Canadian passport, I don't need, mm -hmm. a, I don't need uh, this to uh, come here, so yeah. whenever I feel like I will still come and uh, see you. Okay, that, that so is... I'm kind of living in the two worlds now. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe I worked there for about three years, then I may come back again for three years, you know? So maybe they would have made you a bishop. Then. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> don't, go, don't, don't go there. Don't go there. Don't. I'm not qualified for that. No, uh, nobody knows. Yeah, so mm. uh, I just want to go there and uh, see. Who is your bishop now? Uh, bishop Augustine Okwama. Yeah, so Okwama. Uh, bishop. Oh. And uh, I just want to go. Um, I have a particular interest in music, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I felt that if I had the opportunity to have access to musical instruments when I was younger, mm -hmm. maybe I would have been a, a better musician. <laughs> so um, I didn't have that and since I came here I'm able to, you know, get some instruments, get some instruments and I want to bring them home and uh, get some young people to learn them, you know. So mm -hmm. that, that actually that's my, my prior, my motive, motive yeah. yeah, so my mm -hmm. motive. So, and uh, I just pray that it will work out well. I just pray that the the drum, the drum beat of war, will <laughs> cease. Uh, you know before. Maybe, that maybe you know you know the story in the Bible. Mm. Uh, the man swallowed by the shark okay. who stayed three days. Okay. Maybe when you go home and preach, they will listen and start fighting. Yeah. Well, <laughs> never know. I wonder, I hope they, they, will listen. they will listen because uh, the people who are killing people now in the, in the streets, I don't think they even listen to anybody, you know? No, no, uh, I don't no. Even, I don't even think they listen to the, the cry of the blood, the spirit, you know, every day. It's horrible, you know? So it is horrible. It's getting it must be a very merciful God. Yeah. God would I mean, have wiped out everybody. Yeah, yeah I'm going home. I wanted, I wanted to go home happy, and uh, this is a kind of uh, uh. Um, making it uh, somehow, you know? But I, I have my fears, but I still have to go. Yeah, I really appreciate your decision. It's not yeah. easy to make that decision now. Yeah. And uh, if I were younger than this, uh, something I would have wanted to do. Uh -huh. Because someday, sometime, we have to unfold the sleeves or shirt, show the younger one the scars exactly. we got yeah. while helping to restore Yeah, this. exactly. And, uh, and uh, again, um, I don't want to go home when I will be useless, oh. when oh. I will be so old that I have nothing to offer, to, offer. to society anymore. Yeah. So um, I'm already getting old, so I want oh. to just... Uh, <laughs> I want to go home when I still have some, some, some life, some energy, mm. you know. So when I still have something to offer. So yeah. actually, that is that is another thing that uh, um, informed my decision. You know. Yeah, so. Are you the only religious in your family? Uh, yeah, religious in terms of uh, okay. Priest, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm the one. Yeah. Uh, so, um, how many sisters and how many brothers? Four apiece. Yeah, so, oh, uh, but, uh, wow! But I have a lot of. Uh, nephews and nieces, you know, mm. about 30 or 31 of them. Wow. So, and, uh, okay. So. okay, thank you very much. It's yeah, been a pleasure. Yeah. This is my first time here, and then mm. the scenery is great, as I said. Mm, yeah. And, uh, yeah, Quebec the, is a very beautiful And place. the weather nice. Mm, is... At a stage, I thought I had lost my way. The mm. GPS told me it was one hour's mm. drive, but mm. it wasn't even up to 30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not up to that. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, I was surprised when you called me and told me. Ah, I was surprised too. So probably, probably you didn't put the address very well. No, I did. I did. Okay. Yeah, after all, they guided me straight yeah. to this place. Anyway, so yeah, thank you. It's a, it's a thank pleasure. you. It's a thank you very much. You and and uh, I'm so happy. Thank you. For I so fortunate now you are living. That's why we are coming closer mm. to each other. I've yeah. always seen you. Yeah, we have already been friends, mm. but. Uh, 
you know, sometimes you, people don't, you know, when, when we have people are moving, that's when people look for them, you know, like I was taking, I was Not only the, that, I noticed certain things in you that I'm attracted to. Mm, yeah, uh -huh. so exactly, yeah. So that, that's it. I and the homily on Emmanuel yesterday was mm. great. You explained the meaning, how it came and so on. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Thank I, actually, you. the homily yesterday, I would, I would have loved to speak to you all through, but uh, I had um, a couple, a, a family mm. from my parish here, mm. because of the restrictions, so they couldn't come to Mass. Oh. Um, they usually, sometimes when they, do, when, when they don't, um, Come to when they so don't the make it to mass, mm -hmm. then they will come maybe around one o'clock to mm -hmm. receive communion. You oh. know, it's allowed now this time around you know, because we are restricted. You know the number of people. Oh. So so when they came yesterday, I was preparing for mass, for mass, putting all the you know computer and everything, trying mm -hmm. to set. And they were asking me, Father, can you give us communion? I said, Yeah, I will give you. They said, why, why are you preparing? I said, I have another mass. Oh, we are going to stay for the mass. Oh. I said, no, it's a mass for the Igbo. We are yeah. saying the mass in Igbo. Yeah. Igbo in Nigeria, yes, yes. They said, yeah, they will stay. I said, okay, it's a pleasure. You can stay, you know. You may not understand everything we are saying, but yeah. it's okay. So that made me to use English for the homily. Most actually, more than 90% I used English yeah. Yeah. just to make them feel at home. So I still have. A recorded mass of yours mm. as a Peter, so okay, that okay. was fabulous. Okay. Mm. And um, one other thing I find out here, I think people here might be holier than those in Africa. Mm. On Saturday evenings in Nigeria, mm. you have to line up for co confession. confession yeah. Here nobody comes. No, so no. they're already waiting to be yeah. ordained as, even, say, as I, saints. Yeah, it's even worse in Quebec. Yeah. <laughs> you mean? In Quebec, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, initially I said, we'll all, they, we all have saints. Uh, yeah, over, so, sometimes over I tease them, I say, I'm living <laughs> in a in a community of saints than they laugh, you know? <laughs> they don't yeah. come. And <laughs> whenever they want, they get up, go yeah, to uh, yeah. opinion and yeah, other so things. Well, just, um, I don't know if it's a cultural thing or they've not uh, been educated properly yeah, over the years. It's part of it because um, over the years, things have turned the other way. Mm. And the people think that, uh, like I said, I told you before, there's a kind of generation gap here. Yeah. There's a good number of the grandparents don't know the faith. Mm -hmm. Parents don't know. Children don't know. And some of these children are becoming parents already. Oh. So you can see the generation, the gap, you know. So that is a problem. And uh, some of them, I, I, sometimes I tell them, you don't j join the line because everybody is coming. Yeah, this yeah. Is, you're not coming for cookies. No. Yes, this is the... The, the, body churches, and blood of Jesus, the churches so. are full mm. Easter and Christmas time. Yeah. That's so, it. so it's a it's a problem, maybe it cultural, a cultural, but it's more more of societal problem. So society, mm. the society has uh, changed over time, mm -hmm. and many people don't. Uh, a lot of young people don't even understand the faith. They think that well, I go to church. Uh, when I when, when, I do, when, they want. when it's time, I go and receive communion. There, there is my go. right, you know. So. There you go. So that is the point. Uh, and uh, if uh, if a priest refuses, you are in for trouble. Yeah, so that's a problem again. Yeah. So even <laughs> if you know that that person is a public sinner. Uh, uh, oh yeah. Uh, oh, so yeah. Uh, unfortunately, these things are provided by in the canon law, but sometimes it's very hard to implement them here. It's uh, even because the, of, because the, the bishops society, know. because the bishops here uh, kind of they they have kind of given up. Yeah, power <laughs> to the civil society. Yeah, that, that's why during the pandemic they were able to close the churches. Even some places where they they were allowed to open the churches, some bishops decided to close them. You know? So, okay, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Thanks for your time. Yeah. I do appreciate. Yeah, so thank you. Again. We can't shake now because of uh, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Chuku ge dogi, chuku ge ledo ga. Yeah, I will keep in touch. Hopefully, you come back here yeah, yeah, to well, see us. Yeah, just not new the whole break. Mm-hmm. Papa mm -hmm. never let for one. So, oh, he and he and oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, oh. Toilet, toilet, toilet. So that's it. I just pray that uh, we'll be, we have some relative peace now that we are going home. So. Mm, I hope so. So. so thank you, Gemma. Okay, email okay. nine no, no. yeah. okay. <laughs>
to the end of this interview with Father Albano Sogo Wihe. Your host has been Emmanuel Oku. Thank you very much and bye. Thank you.